I have not home brewed any antenna for the past 35 years. Beyond that, I had first made an inverted V for 40 meters for my home brew solid state via to VW and QRP. I was using 75 ohms TV cable for connecting the antenna to the QRP as I did not know about 50 ohms cable at that time. BD139 finals of the QRP would go QRT often and I had no way of checking the SWR. Later I moved on to homebrew 3 into 807 QRO which was a hybrid circuit using the solid state VFO of the QRP. For that I had made 40 meter and 80 meter horizontal dipole antennas. I could also make an SWR bridge and check the SWR with my analog multimeter and found it reasonable. None of my vacuum tubes went QRT and I could comfortably work DX though mostly on CW including some contacts from the US. Now I have come back to ham radio after a break of almost 10 years initially on VHF using a magnetic mount quarter wave antenna and later with my CP22E antenna at about 9 meter from the ground using a 10 meter HLF 200 cable. Had also a few tests on UHF using the CP22 antenna with low power in view of the 2.25 is to 1 SWR. Homebrewing skills have almost disappeared and it is only because of constant motivation by my 5 year old grandson that I am venturing into it once again. Read about several multi element Yagi designs over the past few months and talk to several ham friends over phone and VHF. My main concerns were the lack of availability of the needed hydraulic clamps and balance with most designs. Finally, I have zeroed in on the KA0NAN 7 element Yagi which had been redesigned by VU3NSH. Still there was a bottleneck. It needed a gamma match which I was not familiar with. So read a bit about the gamma match. In case of a Yagi Uda type of antenna, it allows the driven element to be a single rod or tube without being cut at the feed point, giving more physical integrity to the system. As the RF voltage at the center of a half wave antenna is zero, the outer sleeve of the coax can be connected here, which corresponds to the position on the boom as well. The central conductor of the coax is then connected beyond the center point through a capacitor to tune out the inductance of a connecting arm of antenna. In the K0NAN VU3 NSH design, the capacitance is provided by a piece of coaxial cable with jacket removed and inserted into 7.25 inch aluminum tubing of 3 by 8 inch diameter. The tubing has to be slided in and out to find the lowest SWR while transmitting at low power and later confirmed on high power before fixing the screw on the shorting bar. I have bought 3 by 8 inch round aluminum pipes for the elements of the antenna and 1 inch square aluminum pipe for the antenna boom which are available at very low cost locally thanks to the flourishing aluminum fabrication industry over here. I had procured a spare HLF 200 cable of 10 meter length pre-crimped with PL259 connectors on both ends as well as an SO239 connector and a patch cable for SWR checks both bought online. Of course, a cross needle SWR meter was also bought online for this purpose earlier. Next I checked the inventory of tools which I already have with me and found that it is almost enough to start with. I had a collection of drill bits along with an electrically driven drill, extension board, hacksaw, red marker pen, measuring tape and a small transparent scale as seen in the initial picture. Initially I marked out the positions where I have to drill holes on the boom for the various elements using the measuring tape and marker pen. Next I marked the places where the 3 by 8 inch pipe has to be cut to form the antenna elements. Then they were cut using the hacksaw. The boom was also cut with about 3 inches extra on the reflector side and 2 inches extra on the director side. 
A solid aluminium piece was needed for the shorting stub which I did not get from the local store. Planning to try a piece of 1 inch square pipe as the shorting step. The gap between the gamma match and the driven element is given as 1.5 inch. So I have cut 3.5 inch shorting bar of the 1 inch square pipe. Length of the 3 by 8 inch aluminium pipe has been mentioned as 7.25 inch that was also cut. Next I have to drill holes in the boom for the 3 by 8 inch pipes which I am planning to do on another day. Initial steps of homebrewing of my first EHF 7LMN Yagi was discussed earlier. It is a K0NAN VO3 NSH design from hamradio.in, one of the best ham radio sites from this region by VO2 ITI with whom I used to have regular amateur radio contacts on HF nearly 4 decades back when I was active on HF. Last time I had completed cutting the elements for the 7 element Yagi, 7.25 inch circular 3 by 8 inch aluminium pipe for the gamma step, boom for the antenna and the shorting bar of 1 inch square aluminium pipe. As 50 ohms coax is not available locally, I am planning to use a piece of 75 ohms RG6 coax and try my luck. Incidentally, RG6 is available in plenty in this locality as it is being used for cable TV. My presumption is that as the coax piece is used essentially as a variable capacitor along with the 7.25 inch circular 3 by 8 inch aluminium pipe for tuning part of the gamma match, it may still work for my beam. Reflector was cut at 40.2 inch as given in the design. Driven element length was given as 38.325 inch. First director length is given as 37.075 inch. Second director as 36.95 inch. Third director as 36.45 inch fourth director as 36.075 inch and fifth director as 35.875 inch. I do not have the precision instruments to cut it at the third decimal level. All I have is a hacksaw and an ordinary 6 inch measuring scale and a measuring tape. So I have cut the elements to the nearest division on this scale. I am aware that it may not do well when measuring the SWR and checking the performance. But that is the best I can in this home brewing project. Moreover, as I am using the hacksaw for the first time, I could see that most of the cut edges do not look anywhere near a machine cut element. The edges are quite ragged. Next task was using the electrically driven handle, that too for the first time. I had used the non-electrical handle about 4 decades back for homebrewing my radios when I did not have the luxury of an electrically driven handle. Here again I had problems, the drill bit would slip away from the site I have marked for drilling. Gradually my aim for drilling holes at the right spot improved. I would drill a hole with a smaller size drill bit first and then go for the right sized drill bit so that the slipping problem was less. Another way was to start at a very slow speed and make a small pit on the metal with the drill bit before going for higher drill speeds. Of course, all these would have been tried and perfected by others who are well trained. There could also be better methods which professionals use which I have not been trained in. In between, a couple of drill bits broke off and fortunately, I had a spare one. Anyway, none of the holes which I drilled were perfect with most being oblique and ragged at the opposite end. Now I had to mount the elements on the boom. I marked out the positions for drilling the holes for the screws on the boom. Reflector driven element distance was given as 15.75 inch. Driven element first director distance was 11 inch. Distance between all the successive directors was 15.25 inch. Again, I had to go for the best possible approximations 
due to the limitations. Here the drilling process was easier as only a much smaller drill bit was necessary. I would mark out the middle of the element with a screwdriver using a measuring tape and then keep the element in the intended position on the beam. After that I would mark both sides of the boom on the element so that I can know that it is exactly in the center when inserted within the hole in the side of the boom. Then I would drill a hole in the boom through the element for inserting a 3 4 inch brass screw. Ideally I should use a stainless steel screw for long term performance in the rainy season. But this being a prototype I did not go for stainless steel screw which is difficult to procure while I had the brass screws ready at home. After fixing all the elements on the boom I could see that all the elements are not in the same plane thanks to the oblique holes a true amateur had drilled in the boom. So it is somewhere between a cross yagi and a regular yagi as I would put it in jest. Maybe the next time when I homebrew a UHF yagi with the remaining material I would achieve a better precision. Now I have to think of making the gamma match and the coax connection which I am planning to do another day. You may be wondering why the continuation part of the series on homebrewing 7 element VHF Yagi was delayed. Simple reason is a low level of technical skill. It is almost 11 days I have been working on making the coax connection and the gamma match and I am yet to finish it. Thought of posting an update lest you might think that I have dropped the project. Bottleneck in the project was handling an L shaped metal piece needed for mounting the SO239 connector on the boom and connecting the gamma match. I could get an L shaped metal piece of the required width at a very cheap price from the local hardware shop but it was almost 3 times the needed length. So I had to cut it to the required length using a hacksaw. It was very tough because it was a hard metal and I am not very much used to using a hacksaw. With great difficulty I could saw off one side of the L shaped metal piece as you can see here. Next I started drilling the hole for the SO239. I broke 2 or 3 drill bits in the process and could get hardly a small hole. When I used a thick drill bit it would not advance to the metal piece it just kept on rotating and producing a small pit. So I thought of using a smaller drill bit and drilling multiple holes thinking that I can join them together later to produce a larger hole for the SO239 connector. But that did not work out well. When I tried to join the holes by drilling in between the holes the drill bit kept on slipping away. Finally I took it to the local industrial shop to get a hole drilled. As expected they had comments. You could have brought it in the beginning without trying out your silly methods. They drilled the hole in the middle which was ragged because of the multiple holes drilled earlier. Edges were smoothened by a mechanical file and a welding rod. That is why you can see the burned areas nearby. Regarding cutting the other end and drilling holes for the screws for holding the SO239 they left it to me saying that the metal piece has already become weak and if they try to do it with their machines it might break off. I managed to cut off the other part of the L shaped metal piece with the hacksaw with some difficulty as holding it was a problem. Next I had to drill the holes for screws for holding the SO239 connector. The right sized drill bit kept on slipping. Again I opted to make a smaller hole with another drill bit and made it a bit larger by rotating the drill bit manually while the drill was in action within the hole so that that just became just a bit larger for me to push the screw in. Another hole was drilled on the opposite part of the L shaped metal piece for fixing on the boom. Actually two holes are needed but there is not enough space for using the electrically driven hand drill as the SO239 has already been fixed. If the metal piece does not get fixed well to the boom I will have to unscrew the SO239 for drilling another hole. By this time I was quite tired 
and thought of doing the rest of the work another day. Now I know why many people opt for assembling a knockdown kit of a commercial antenna than home brewing it, though cost will be much less. Of course, the performance of initial home brew antennas are also likely to be much lower than a commercially tuned one. Yet that is the spirit of home brewing which has not fully disappeared from me after being inactive for 3 decades. One more hole was drilled in the L-shaped metal piece for holding the SO239 antenna connector to be fixed on the boom of the 7 element VHF Yagi being home brewed. It was then fixed over the boom near the position of the driven element. 7.25 inch of 75 ohms RG6 television cable was cut and placed inside the circular 3 by 8 inch aluminium pipe of same length for tuning part of the gamma match. As the RG6 cable was thinner than the RG213 given in the design, I retained the outer sheath of the coax and the shield to see how it works. Metallic shield and the aluminium foil inside it was practically shorting with the aluminium pipe at one end where the plastic sheath was removed to expose the inner conductor. The inner conductor of the coax was soldered to the inner conductor of the SO239 connector. The 7.25 inch aluminium pipe was fixed on the driven element with a sliding mechanism using a short piece of 1 inch square aluminium pipe in a way that it was almost 1.5 inch separated from the driven element. It is meant to be slided for tuning the gamma match as the shorting bar. Two screws were also fixed on the shorting stub, one to the gamma pipe and one to the driven element so as to ensure good electrical contact as I was using a square aluminium pipe instead of a solid piece of aluminium. I had 10 meters of HLF 200 coaxial cable pre-crimped with PL259 connectors at both ends. One end was connected to the SO239 on the VHF Yagi and other end to the SWR meter. Patch cable from the SWR meter was connected to my quarter century old VHF base station which would work only on low power. As a non-conducting piece of pipe could not be found at that time, I attached a piece of surplus multi-wood board which was quite thin to the center of the antenna boom perpendicular to it as the upper part of the mast. As it would not support the weight of the antenna and started bending, I had to reinforce it with a metallic telescopic pole used for painting higher up in the walls. All attachments were made using nylon wires and were not very secure like stainless steel clamps which I did not get from the local market. Put the antenna up 9 feet inside a first floor room and check the SWR. I was shocked to see an SWR of 10 is to 1. Stop work for the day as I was quite tired to resume the next day. Meanwhile, I had talked to a senior ham who told me that RG6 coax also should do the job if you adjust the tuning of the gamma match. Several possibilities for initial failure were thought of. Checked all the connections by multimeter and ensured that the contacts to the boom of the elements and antenna contacts were good. The multi-wood piece was replaced by a stronger piece of plastic pipe recycled from an old mop so that the metallic telescopic pole would be at least 2 feet away from the boom though the recommendation is 3 feet. When the antenna was re-hosted inside the room, an SWR of about 2 is to 1 was obtained and I could access two repeaters, one at about 4 kilometers and another at about 30 kilometers. As there was a fan and a multi-gym near the antenna, with plenty of metal, I decided to conduct further tests outside the room. Moreover, the SWR was shooting back to 10 is to 1 intermittently and I did not know the reason. In two places where the screws seemed to be a little loose, additional ties were given with bare multi-strand copper wire, presuming that it could be a loose contact causing the intermittent jumps in SWR. 
the metallic telescopic pole was tied with nylon wires to the parapet of the first floor balcony and the seven element VHF beam antenna raised to about six meter from the ground still within the height of the building. Again, SWR was 2 is to 1, but performance was better in terms of reception of repeaters. With the antenna pointing south, Tirur repeater about 30 kilometers away was easily accessed, while there was no access to Vadagra repeater about 40 km north. I was happy that the beam antenna is doing its function with significant front to back ratio. Calicut repeater, which is only about 4 km away, could still be accessed well with the beam pointed almost perpendicular to it, presumably because of proximity. When the beam was turned north, Vadagara repeater could be accessed Why I lost access to Thiru repeater in the opposite direction, again showing the directional gain of the 7 element VHF Yagi. As the SWR was still not in the acceptable range, the 7 element VHF Yagi antenna was lowered to adjust the gamma match. While attempting to adjust the gamma match, the soldered joint between the inner conductor of the coax and the SO239 connector broke. It was because the shorting step was not well fixed, being a square lumen pipe than a solid piece of aluminium. The shorting step was also at an angle because I had fixed the L-shaped metal piece with the SO239 connector too close to the driven element. Push the inner conductor of the coax back into the SO239 without soldering and apparently fixed it. The shorting step was pulled back a little as tuning. Of course, it did not work and the SWR was higher at 2.5 is to 1. With a lot of work done single-handedly, decided to call it a day and continue on another day.